Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a contour map from a 3D scan. This video follows on from my previous video on how to create 3D scans from a sequence of photographs. And in this tutorial I'm going to be using this 3D model here which is a scan of a path within a forest which leads down to this sort of river down here. Now you'll see that this path has a slight level change where it dips down at the bottom and then gradually increases in these two sides. So we're going to be using this scan to create a contour map of this area. Now to do this I'm going to start and begin by creating a box which I'm going to use to reference against my scan. This will help us in determining the direction we're going to be cutting our contour lines and where the base point of this will be. So I'm going to move this box down to the bottom of the scan and just make sure that it's lower than the lowest point there, like so. Now we're just really using this for reference, so I'm just going to leave the cube there. And once you've made that, we're then going to select the whole object here, deselect our cube. Just make sure we've got the whole scan selected in there. Now in my layers, I'm just going to make sure I'm working in a different layer to the layer of my scan. So my scan layer is in this default option and I'm working in layer 1 currently. So with the scan selected, we're now going to type in contour, like so. For the contour plane base point, we're going to select the base point of our cube here, which we're using as our reference. And then for the direction perpendicular to the contour planes, because I want to cut these vertically up through my model so I can get a sense of the topography of this model, we're going to select the top point of the cube just above my base point here. So the point vertically above that, like so. The next option it will ask is the distance between the contours, and this will determine how often the model is sliced to produce your contour lines. Now, depending on what units you're working on, this number will be different. I'm in millimeters for this model, and I'm going to do my distance between my contours at 200 millimeters. If you've got very steep terrain, you might set this distance higher, and if it's very shallow terrain, you might set it lower so you can see a lot more marginal distance between the contour planes. So this figure really depends on the model you're cutting, but for this I'm going to set it as 200. And once you've done that, you can then just hit enter and it will start slicing up your model. So we'll zoom out, hit enter, and you can see the contours there. As they're created. So all that's done is it's just gone from top to bottom through my model cutting up these contour lines here. Now as you can see my scan isn't perfect so we've got a few areas where we've got holes in the scan and parts missing. For this purpose this doesn't really matter too much as we can tidy up these contour lines afterwards so what it does give us is a really accurate level of detail on these contours cutting up through the model to give us an idea of how this terrain is moving. So once we've made that, what we're going to do is we'll just use the move tool to move these contour lines out from the model. Usually I just try and sort of move it perpendicular to the model I've got here by a set amount. So I'm just going to hold the shift key, hold tab to lock that in the horizontal motion, and we'll just move this out by 10 meters or 10,000 millimeters there. So you can see. So there we've got our contour lines and there we've got our model. Now, because we've kind of now got our contours, we can now turn off our model, which will make moving around the viewport a bit quicker. And I'm going to set this to shaded so we can see it a bit more clearly. So what you'll find is once you've cut this and we'll move into the top view to have a look at this in more detail, is that you'll find some areas it might be quite dense with these contour lines because we have parts of the geometry stacking up on top of each other and some parts that are not kind of fully accurate as per the actual site. So what I usually do at this stage is I'm just going to go around and tidy up some of these contour lines. We can get rid of some of these ones that are stacking on top of each other like so and just keep the base piece. And we're just going to do that just to make working with this geometry a bit cleaner and easier to do. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm just going to go around and tidy up any of these overlapping lines. Here you can see now that I've now tidied up those additional lines so we just have our clean contour lines left marking out our different distances there. So now what I'm going to do is I need to know what level each of these lines are and at the moment they're all the same colour so it's quite hard to tell when I'm looking in top view which level each line corresponds to. 
to help sort of work this out, what I'm going to do is we're going to move to one of the side views, either right or front, and we'll take the right hand one for now. I'm going to delete out my base cube. Before I do so, I'm just going to draw a line here to determine my ground plane there, so we know sort of where the object starts at. And what we're going to do is we're going to color code each of these lines according to their level for, to help us understand sort of what height each of these are set to. So we can then annotate on each of the heights of these lines. To do this, all we're going to do is we're going to go select each line, go to the properties panel, and then under display color there, we're going to set that color to a different color according to its height. So to start with, we're just going to go to other and we're going to do this by using the color spectrum here. So I'm going to start with a yellow at the lowest height and we'll move up to a sort of pink color for the highest. So for this one, we're going to set it to a yellow color, like so. Then all I'm going to do is just go up the lines, selecting all the lines on that same plane, going to display color, setting other, and just moving it up the spectrum slightly so we can clearly see a difference. So then we'll go up to the next one, by layer, other, and move it up to an orange. And I'm just going to pause the video and do this for all these lines here. So we're going to move up the color spectrum. Now you can see that I've finished color coding those lines. We get a nice gradient of yellow from our bottom line all the way up to a blue on our top line there. And if we go back to our top view now, we can now clearly see what the lowest parts of those contour maps are compared to what the highest parts are. So it gives us a really good indication of those levels. I can now go in and add a level mark to each of these levels based upon their color. And because I've done this at contours of 200 millimeters, I know that the lightest color, the yellow, will be 200. And as we go through each color stage, I can add a next 200 level on there to get an accurate label for each of my contour lines. Now you can see I've added in my dimensions to each of these contour lines here as we move up. So we now have a record of how high these are in relation to one another and that base plane. So now we've added our annotations, we can start to turn this into a drawing. Now you'll see that obviously at the moment our terrain is still sort of stacked up in its topography sense, in fact that they're all stacked one on top of the other as per their Z dimension. And what I want to do now is I want to flatten this all into one flat drawing plane so I can start to add in extra information and build this into a plan drawing here. So all I'm going to do is we'll just select these contour lines, I'm going to copy them and we'll copy them over here. I mean, it's good to do this by set dimension so I'm going to copy them over at 10,000 here and hold the shift key. So we have a copy of these. Then we're just going to select all our lines here. And I think we'll just move this one out of the way for now. So select all our lines. And we're going to type in set point, just set PT. We're going to set this to the Z axis and align to world and hit OK there. And what this would do is just take all of these objects and flatten them on the Z axis. And we can just lock that to the base plane as per and there you can see we now have a flattened form of our contour map. And now we can start to use these contours to draw in the rest of the parts of the site, and turn this into a line drawing. And what I've done is I've prepared a series of layers which start to do this over here as well. So we have our contour lines here. We have drawn out a grid for this plan too. I've drawn in some elevational lines for the kind of pieces of terrain that I found on the object. And I've been using a reference photo of this terrain as per my previous video on drawing up plan drawings from scans such as this. I'm using out this reference image here to help give me some objects to draw onto this plan. And then we've also got elevational lines to denote the different path types and the different ground treatments of this plane. And then also a section line to note which parts of the plan are actually being chopped. And I've got two large trees here which are being cut in this plan. So I've also drawn those in as well. And for each of these, I've given them a line weight to turn this into an actual drawing. If I now turn the reference off on my layout page here, I've set up this contour drawing at a 1 to 100 scale and I've given each of these line weights so my contours are in this light green 
we've got some grid lines in sort of dotted green there and I've also got my heights of my contours there and we've drawn out the rest of the parts of this plan. So now we're starting to build up quite a comprehensive plan drawing of this particular area with my contours correctly leveled to the site. So that was just a quick tutorial on how you start to create a contour map from a 3D scan object. I hope you found this useful and if you want to watch any other videos on creating drawings and renders from 3D scan objects and other objects within Rhino, please watch the videos on the channel.